We are transmitting live from San Diego, California, from the studios of KPBS on the campus of San Diego State University. Greetings to our distinguished participants in Mexico, the Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, Peru, Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, Bolivia, Argentina, and the United States of America. Once again, we would like to thank Telecomunicaciones de México, PanamSat, BrazilSat, and NawalSat for their satellite linkage services, which allow us to reach all of you directly through the wonders of telecommunications. Welcome to the program Quality Standards for Global Competitiveness, What Executives Should Know, which is the eighth video conference of our 1996 series entitled Strategies for Global Competitiveness. My name is Armando Osorio, and I will be your moderator for this video conference. We would like to remind the coordinator at each received site to collect the attendance sheets for your sites and mail them to the International Training Center along with a list of participants interested in obtaining the certificate or diploma for this series of programs. This, prog th this program is composed of two presentation modules and two question and answer sessions. We look forward to your live participation. There is no question that a necessary condition for global competitiveness today is compliance with international quality standards, such as the ISO series. However, the concept of standardization has been challenged by many as an inward-looking approach, not compatible with modern management and organizational development approaches, which emphasize flexibility, adaptability, creativity, and customer-focused service. Our guest and expert speaker will discuss the various types of international quality standards currently accepted and what executives should really know about their implementation. It will also clarify how a minimum quality standard concept must be managed so as not to curtail the quest for excellence needed in successful organizations as we enter the 21st century. Mr. Zalatan is a recognized international expert and consultant in the field of just-in-time, with, with more than 20 years of experience in programs of productivity, improvement, and efficiency in large multinational corporations such as General Electric and Caterpillar. As Divisional Director at Solar Turbines Incorporated in San Diego, Mr. Zalatan has directed work teams to simplify systems and procedures and has implemented innovative methods of just-in-time technology, transforming the company into a world-class organization. He is currently responsible for implementing ISO 9000 standards at Solar Turbines Incorporated. Mr. Zalatan is also an instructor at San Diego State University and has given a number of presentations and has been keynote, keynote speaker at a number of conferences nationally and internationally. He has also uh, been a consultant for a number of um, companies such as American Society for Quality Control, International Manufacturing Institute, Gas Turbine Users Association, American Electronics Association, and ITT. Welcome, Mr. Zalatan. Let us begin with an introductory question. Mr. Zalatan, are critics of ISO 9000 justified when they say that the process is very expensive and cumbersome due to the need for process documentation and the rigidity of, its, of the norms and standards? It's Armando, there has been uh, criticism of ISO 9000 and uh, uh, many companies have, say, have said that it requires extensive documentation and uh, bureaucracy. Um, I do not agree with these critics uh, personally. In my own experience, what I have found is companies that are making these criticisms have taken the ISO standard and, and made it very complex and bureaucratic. They've actually done it to themselves. Um, a specific example would be a, a company I've been working with recently that um, when I went in to review their documentation, I looked at their contract review procedures and, and saw that they were uh, over 100 pages long. They took one paragraph of ISO, which covers contract review, and has some very, very basic guidelines in it. Uh, for example, at, uh, ISO will ask you to make sure you understand your customer's contract requirements, make sure you have a process in place to review these requirements and assure the capabilities in place to fulfill the contract requirements. 
And ISO also asks that you have a process in place to assure that any differences are resolved with your customer on, on uh, any contract disputes. So these are very, very basic common sense guidelines. And this company took these, this one, one or two short paragraphs and created 100 pages of documentation. Now, this is an example that I've seen time and time again where companies will take the very, very basic ISO guidelines and create extensive bureaucracy and extensive documentation, which is not required by ISO, but it's something that they did to themselves. So when you hear this kind of criticism, you have to go back and, sit and look at the standard and what is the standard really asking me to do and um, what am I doing with this information? Uh, many times you'll find that um, you don't really either understand the standard or you've gone way beyond the intent of the standard. Thank you, very interesting. Now we're going to uh, start um, with the first module in which Mr. Zalatan will explain how the ISO 9000 standards are becoming a requirement in order for organizations to compete globally in, with success. Thank you. Last year, I had the opportunity to give you an overview of ISO 9000 and discuss implementation strategy. This year, I am very honored to have the opportunity to share information with you again. This year, the focus of my talk will be to review the importance of ISO 9000 certification for businesses competing in a global environment, update you on recent developments in the area of international standards, and discuss how ISO 9000 can be used as an executive tool to lead continuous improvement efforts throughout an entire company. Let's start with a review of ISO 9000. ISO 9000 is a series of five individual but related international quality system standards, ISO 9001, ISO 9002, and 9003. They were developed for use in contractual situations between a customer and a supplier. ISO 9001 is the most comprehensive standard and it applies to companies involved in the full range of activities including design, development, production, installation, and servicing. ISO 9002 covers just production, installation, and servicing and is intended for businesses that do not have design and development activities. An example would be a company manufacturing components to a customer's design. ISO, ISO 9003 covers just final inspection and test and is intended, intended for businesses that conduct no design or manufacturing activities. An example would be a company that distributes products that are designed and manufactured by others. ISO 9000 is the roadmap for the series and provides guidelines for the use and application of ISO 9001, 2, and 3. ISO 9004 contains overall quality management and quality system guidelines and is very useful as an overall reference. ISO 9004 is not intended to be used in contractual situations. The standards are generic and provide guidelines for a quality system that are not specific to any particular product. They are relevant to all types of business. They can be used by manufacturing and service businesses alike. ISO 9000 covers manufacturing businesses as diverse as electronics, steel, and chemicals, and service businesses as diverse as medicine, insurance, banking, and transportation. Today, there is nearly unanimous worldwide acceptance of ISO 9000. This is demonstrated by the fact that 74 countries around the world have adopted ISO 9000 as their national quality system standard. These 74 countries represent most of the industrialized world. As a result, for the first time in history, ISO 9000 has provided a common worldwide definition of the meaning of the term quality system. To understand ISO 9000, we need to understand the term quality system. There are many different interpretations of the term. The modern approach to quality that ISO 9000 is based on defines a quality system as the operating principles a company has in place to satisfy both internal and external customers. 
The modern ISO 9000 approach to quality requires that a quality system involve each and every activity of a business, starting with the customer order and including design, development, manufacturing, installation, and servicing. This modern thinking is in contrast with old, obsolete thinking that a quality system just applies to manufacturing. Many industrialized countries created formal quality system standards which specify in detail quality system requirements for that country. These national quality system standards are unique to each country and therefore vary from country to country. Some address quality from just a manufacturing perspective. Some are more comprehensive and address a broader range of business activities. As a result, in the past, companies competing in a global environment have been forced to understand and comply with different quality system requirements in each country they conduct business in. Because there was a wide and varied interpretation of quality systems from country to country, there was a growing worldwide need to establish a quality system model that was common for all countries. The International Organization for Standardization took on this challenge and in 1987 created the ISO 9000 standard. The International Organization for Standardization was founded in 1946 to promote the development of standardization. Based in Geneva, Switzerland, the organization has members from 91 countries. These 91 countries represent most of the industrialized world. The organization has a vision to facilitate the international exchange of goods and services and to develop international cooperation in the areas of technological and economic activity. The results of the organization's technical work are published as inter international standards such as ISO 9000. ISO 9000, for the first time in history, provides a uniform model for quality systems worldwide and has been very successful in developing a common quality language which has supported the increased level of international business activity and the increased international interest in the area of quality system standards. The ISO 9000 standards have won international acceptance and credibility. Both large and small companies have built and continue to build their quality systems around the ISO 9000 standards. While ISO 9000 is not a legal requirement for access to any international market, many international businesses have come to the conclusion that compliance with the ISO 9000 standards is key to doing business in global markets. Several factors have emerged to make ISO 9000 the model for quality systems throughout the world and the subject of intense inter interest worldwide. The greatest driver for ISO 9000 implementation has come from market pressure. This market pressure has come from customers and competitors. Executives wondering whether to pursue registration to ISO 9000 need to consider the following questions. Will registration help you compete globally? Are your customers requesting that you become registered? Are your competitors pursuing registration? Will your company benefit from implementing a formal quality system? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then it is likely that you should pursue ISO 9000 implementation. In many business situations, ISO 9000 has become a mandatory contract requirement from customer to supplier. The use of ISO 9000 in contract situations began in Europe as a result of the decision by the integrated European community to adopt ISO 9000 as the quality system standard for all of the nations in the European community. Many companies in Europe began require, requiring ISO 9000 compliance in their contracts with their suppliers around the world. As nations beyond Europe began adopting the ISO 9000 standards, companies beyond Europe began including ISO 9000 as a contract requirement with their suppliers. Around the world, the influence of ISO 9000 is continuing to grow. ISO 9000 contract requirements between companies are now becoming more common throughout the industrial world. In addition to the pressure to implement ISO 9000 as a result of contract requirements, 
Many companies are implementing ISO 9000 to keep up with their competition. They do this when they find their competition is getting certified to the standard. In other cases, forward-thinking companies are getting certified to ISO 9000 to, to obtain a com competitive advantage. They are getting certified to ISO 9000 to get out in front of their competition by distinguishing themselves from competitors that do not comply. As a result of the worldwide buy-in of the ISO 9000 standard, for the first time in history, there is now a common worldwide definition and understanding of the term quality system. The ISO standards are being adopted by more and more service companies. In fact, just recently, I had the opportunity to work with, I believe, is the first university in the world to be certified to the ISO 9000 standard. Working with the university, I found that the ISO 9000 standard was a very relevant tool for the university and provided good support to the university in its goal to improve the quality of the services it offers its students. After successfully going through the ISO certification process with this university, I have been asked many times how was it possible to apply the ISO standard to a university? In fact, I found that all of the ISO elements were very relevant to a university environment. For example, universities and other service organizations need to have a quality policy that is understood and followed by all of the employees. A university needs to, to define its management responsibilities. A key part of management responsibility is to assure adequate resources are in place to accomplish quality objectives. All employees in a university need to understand their individual responsibility and authority and what their role is in the quality system. This requires that all processes that affect quality must be documented in the form of formal procedures and that all employees must be trained in the procedures. It also requires that job descriptions and organization charts clearly defining everyone's roles in the quality system must be current and, and meaningful to employees. These requirements are just as essential in a university environment as they are in a commercial business environment. A university has to have a contract review process with its students and needs to assure the contract is understood and any contract issues are resolved. Both parties need to have clear expectations of what is, is expected from each to successfully fulfill the contract requirements. A university needs to establish design requirements and design objectives for the courses it intends to offer and must perform design reviews to assure that the completed curriculum designs meet the original course objectives. A university must establish a document control process for all documents that affect quality. The document control process must describe the university's change control process. For example, the university must assure changes in course curriculums are released in a controlled environment and that the latest course curriculum information is made available to all affected by changes. A university must assure that it has good process control to assure course curriculums are taught to students in, a, in an effective manner. A university must assure that professors have the proper qualifications and skills to teach the course material. And the university must assure it has a process to continuously plan and deliver training to upgrade professor's skills as technology advances. A university needs to have an internal audit program to assure its quality system is being followed and that the quality system is effective. And just like any business, as problems in the system occur, the university must assure appropriate corrective actions are taken to eliminate the root causes of the problems. A university deals with many suppliers a, uni a university must assess the quality capability of its suppliers and it must assure purchasing information 
given to its suppliers is clear and accurate. A university must measure the quality performance of suppliers and must verify that the products received from its suppliers meet the university's requirements. A university must develop meaningful quality measurements and data and establish lines of communication with its students to assure students are satisfied. The university must keep quality records of important information such as student contracts and curriculum design review reviews. The university president has shared with me that going through the ISO certification process has identified weak links in the university's quality system and has improved the university's ability to perform its key processes in a consistent, disciplined manner. He feels that ISO 9000 has definitely improved the overall operating efficiency of the university. After going through this process with this university, I am now convinced that ISO 9000 can be successfully applied to a service business as well as manufacturing companies where the ISO standard is more traditionally used. Recent developments in the United States demonstrate the growing influence of ISO 9000. The big three U.S. automakers, Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler, as well as several heavy-duty truck manufacturers have joined together and announced that a new standard, QS 9000, will replace all of their previous individual company quality standards. QS 9000 will apply to all of the suppliers that provide production parts or services to the auto industry. It is estimated that QS 9000 will affect over 15,000 auto industry suppliers. QS 9000 uses the exact text of the ISO 9000 standard word for word as its foundation and then adds some specific auto industry requirements. In another recent development, the United States Food and Drug Administration is in the process of revising the Good Manufacturing Practices Standard. Thousands of food, drug, and medical equipment manufacturers must comply with the Good Manufacturing Practices Standards. The revision to the Good Manufacturing Practices will be based on ISO 9000. Similar to what the auto manufacturers are doing, it will use the exact text of ISO 9000 word for word and supplement it with some requirements unique to the food, drug, and medical equipment industries. In another major development, the United States Defense Department is in the process of replacing its military standards with ISO 9000. This will affect thousands of suppliers to the United States military industry. In another very recent development, a group of 16 of the prime United States commercial aerospace and aviation manufacturers have joined together to develop a common quality standard for their suppliers. The development of this standard is still in work, but as in the other industry groups we discussed, it will be composed of the exact text of the ISO 9000 standard supplemented with specific aerospace industry requirements. So the trend is that the influence of ISO 9000 continues to grow as more and more major industry groups develop industry-specific quality standards using ISO 9000 as the foundation. Another very significant recent development in international standards is the ISO 14000 series of environmental management standards, which was discussed in detail during another training session, video conference. Just as ISO 9000 has provided a single set of quality system standards for the international community, the ISO 14000 standard will provide a single set of international environmental management standards. ISO 14000 will provide many advantages to the international community. It will help eliminate multiple current environmental registrations, inspections, certifications, labels and conflicting requirements. ISO 14000 will provide a single environmental system for international companies to implement wherever they operate. It will take the place of numerous regional and national environmental standards that now create barriers to international trade and add to the cost of many products. 
ISO 14000 will include the general categories of environmental management systems, environmental auditing, environmental labeling, and environmental performance evaluation. ISO 14000 will provide a worldwide focus on environmental management, promote predictability and consistency in environmental man management, and provide a means for companies to demonstrate commitment to environmental performance. With the precedent that has been established with the ISO 9000 standard, it is likely that the ISO 14000 standard will quickly gain international acceptance in the important area of environmental management. While ISO 9000 is focused on establishing guidelines for a quality system and meeting customer requirements, ISO 14000 focuses on all aspects of a company's environmental operations. Now, in addition to satisfying customers' quality requirements, a company will be able to demonstrate environmental responsibility to its customers. Minimizing negative environmental impacts is quickly becoming another measure by which organizations involved in international businesses will be evaluated. Just as the ISO 9000 standard has become recognized around the world as the basic foundation for a quality system, I predict that the ISO 14000 Environmental Management System standard will become internationally recognized as a key to demonstrating environmental accountability in a world increasingly sensitive to the consequences of poor environmental management. In segment two of our program, I will return to a focus on ISO 9000 and describe how executives can use ISO 9000 as a foundation to manage company-wide quality improvement efforts. Let us now begin with our first question and answer session. We will try to answer as many questions as possible. Therefore, we ask that only one question be asked per phone call and that these questions be as brief as possible. You may call the studio directly at the phone numbers or fax which now appear on your screen. And we remind you to make your phone calls at a distance from the monitor to avoid feedback. First participant calling is the University from San Jose, Costa Rica. And uh, the question is, I have heard of organizations that have adopted ISO 9000. And it worked well initially, but after two months, they ran into financial difficulties and in some cases have even gone bankrupt. To what extent can ISO 9000 guarantee an organization's profitability? Uh, well, Armando, uh, uh, ISO 9000 cannot guarantee and does not uh, guarantee a company's uh, profitability. Uh, uh, ISO 9000, all it can do is help a company put a basic quality system in place. Uh, a company still must uh, design and develop products that uh, the marketplace is going to accept uh, and uh, there, there is no way that ISO can guarantee proper profitability. It can help a company uh, uh, with this profitability by helping it streamline its operations but in no means can it guarantee profitability. That company still has to have a strategy and have to have products that satisfy customers needs. Muchas gracias.